Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I'll teach you how to make the animation you just saw in Blender. We're going to do both the modeling and the rendering. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so we need to switch from Blend Render to Cycles Render, and then click S, then X to scale the cube on the X-axis. Then left click to confirm the scale, and then we need to scale it up, so click S to scale, and then S, then Y then 1.8 to scale it 1.8 times on the y-axis which is to get the uh, right aspect ratio so left click to confirm the scale and uh, then we need to model the back of the tv so uh, switch to edit mode either by clicking tab or uh, switching down here and then go to face select and then select the face on the back of the tv and then click e to extrude and then left click to confirm the extrusion and then click S to scale down the extrusion now to make the back of the TV a little bit more smooth we can click Control B and then use the mouse wheel to add additional edges and then left click to confirm once again and now it's finally time to add the frame and the screen of the TV so we need to use loop cuts to add additional edges so um, click Control R and then uh, use the mouse wheel one time to add two of them then click S then set to move them on the Z axis and then left click to confirm and now we need to add edges vertically as well so click Control R once again and then use the mouse wheel one time and then left click to confirm and then click S then Y to move them on the Y axis then let's set it around here and then left click to confirm okay so now we need to extrude the faces that we just made to uh, make a frame around the screen so hold in shift and select all of the faces around the screen and this one this one and then the last one and then click E to extrude just a little bit and then we need to click Control B to use the uh, bevel and then use the mouse wheel to add additional edges so add a few and then left click to confirm now to make this uh, tutorial as simple as possible I will only use cubes and uh, cylinders to uh, create the TV stand and the TV table below it so to add a new object, go back to object mode and then click shift A to add the uh, cube. So shift A and then a cube and then click G then set to grab the object on the Z axis and then click S then shift set to scale it only on the X and Y axis. Then click S then set to scale it on the Z axis and then just S to scale it down. And uh, Click G, then set to grab it on the z-axis and G, then X to grab it on the x-axis. And then to add some smoothness to the object, click Ctrl B for the bevel and then use the mouse wheel to add additional edges. Okay. And then we need to add the second cube. So click G, then set to grab the cube on the z-axis. Then click S, then set to scale it on the z-axis and then click S, then X to scale it on the X-axis and then click G, then Set to grab it on the Z-axis and then S, then Y to scale it on the Y-axis and then click Ctrl-B once again to use the bevel and then use the mouse wheel to add additional edges okay, so now we have the TV shape so it's time to save for the first time, I think just to be sure so, uh, Go up to file and then click save as and then give the file a name and save it wherever you want on the computer and then we can click shift a and add a cube click g then set to grab it on the z-axis then s then set to scale it on the z-axis then g then set to grab it on the z-axis and then click s then x to scale it on the x-axis and this is going to be the table so we need to make it wider so click s then y to scale it on the y-axis and I'm not going to add any bevels to this object. 
Now I'm going to add two levels to the table. So uh, we can duplicate the first level. So click Shift D to uh, duplicate and then click Set to grab the duplication on the set axis. Then left click to confirm the position and then click Shift A and add a cylinder. And uh, let's go into edit mode and select each face on each side. And then click N and increase the mean increase value to 1, which means that when you add the subdivision surface modifier, we're not going to subdivide each end of the cylinder so that uh, each end stays flat. Okay, so scale it down, click G, then set to grab it on the set axis, and then G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis, and then G, then X to grab it on the X axis. And uh, then let's grab it. And then grab it upwards, click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. And then we go into edit mode and uh, grab the lower face on the set axis downwards. So click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. Now, in order to duplicate the uh, table leg three times, I will uh, use the array modifier. So add the array modifier and then change the uh, X value. And uh, let's move it down a bit. And then grab it a bit on the x-axis maybe. And then we need to add another array modifier. And then set the x-value to 0. And then increase the y-value to duplicate them on the y-axis. Okay, so now we have uh, four table legs. So let's save the file. Make a new one. And... Uh, then we can finally get into the materials, the lighting, and the screen. Okay, so let's start off with the lighting. So select the lamp, change it into a sun, change the size to 1, and then change the strength to 7. And click G to uh, grab the sun, and then click R to rotate the sun. And then let's select the table and add some materials to the table. So uh, right click to select the table. And then go to the materials, make a new material, and then change it to the principal shader. Now start off by making the material completely white, and then change the transmission value to 1 to make the table transparent, as you can see when we go into the rendered view. And then just uh, copy the same material for the legs and uh, the rest of the table. Like this, and then we can change the name of the material as well. So. Let's uh, change it to gloss and then shift set to switch back to solid view. Now let's add the floor as well. So click shift A and add a plane and then click G then set to grab it on the set axis Then click S to scale it up. So something like this and then click new to add a new material. And for the floor, I'm only going to add a gloss material and then set the roughness to about 0.5. And uh, for the background color, I'll make it almost completely black. Some people might think it's too dark, so you can change the color to whatever you want to. But I'm just going to make it uh, dark, like in a cinema. Okay. And then set the rendering to GPU if you have one. If not, just keep using the CPU. It's going to be a bit slower, but uh, it's still going to work. So uh, make any material for the television. And then set it to principled make the color black or another one if you want to have a different color for your TV and then change the metallic value to 1 and then change the roughness to around 0.4 and uh, I will change the clear code value to 1 for the sake of time I'm not going to explain what uh, each value means but you can easily google the uh, principal shader and find out yourself so let's just copy the same material for the uh, TV stand as well. And uh, let's make a new save. Let's make this one number three. And uh, now it's time to add the uh, screen material. So uh, make a new material, click new, and then change the uh, material to uh, emission. And then change the color to image texture. And then we will go into edit mode and then select the screen face and then click U to unwrap the screen. And then go into the UV image editor 
Okay, so now what we need to do is to add the video file or the image file to the face that we just unwrapped. So uh, go down to open and open the file. Let's just find the right folder and make sure that video files are visible as well. And then select the file, open image. And then we need to uh, select the file next to the open button. Now, once the video file is selected, there are a few more steps we need to do before the uh, screen works. So first of all, we need to assign the material to the uh, screen face and then auto refresh and then increase the amount of frames so that we actually get enough frames to show the video. Okay. And uh, then just uh, remove this window by dragging it. And uh, then let's use the uh, camera. So click number zero to look through the camera. Click uh, Shift F to use the fly cam and move around with W, A, S, and D in the fly cam, just like in a video game. Now, if the video you added to the TV has any sound, I would recommend just adding the sound in iMovie or uh, Movie Maker later on instead of doing it in Blender, because uh, that's much easier. Okay, so let's go into render settings, set the resolution quality to 100%, and then let's make an output folder where we save the animated file. And we're going to save them as images in a uh, folder. So uh, let's make a new folder, and then select the folder. And then once you have selected the folder, just give the animation a name. And the reason why I render them out as uh, images is because it's easier to pause and resume the rendering. Now set the samples to 200 or 300 if you want the animation to look better and turn on the noising as well to get less noise. If you have a GPU, make sure to set the tile size to 500. If not, just leave them at 64. Now, after a few minutes of rendering, this is what it looks like. So uh, now I'm just going to make a few small changes. That's why I speed up the video because these uh, changes doesn't really matter that much. It's just uh, slight differences in the colors and the materials. And I think I will change the brightness of the sun as well to make the uh, sun a bit stronger. So let's set it to 12 and then make a new test render. And uh, now I'm going to animate the camera. As you saw in the final animation, there was some movement to the camera in the beginning. So select the camera and I also have to make sure we're in the first frame and then keyframe the location and the rotation and then move forward in time and then use the fly cam shift f and move around with w a s and d then click i and keyframe the location and rotation once again and now we have some basic movement to the camera and then click animation and that's it for the tutorial i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i'll post a new tutorial very soon so uh, thank you guys for watching and subscribe.